the best advice that I could give to somebody in the gym would be listen to everything everyone says and listen to nothing anyone says. Now, how do these two even relate? How do these two correlate? I'm going to jump right into this in one minute, but I just want to tell you guys, make sure you watch this full entire video so you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to explain what I'm talking about, and then I'm going to give a few examples on how this went with me personally throughout my lifting career, how I was able to grow off of this. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. So what do I mean by listen to everything everyone says, but don't listen to anything anyone says? And so the way that I could kind of put this is there is a time and place for criticism. There's a time and place for critique. There's a time and place for everything comments related, right? If somebody just fails a 700 pound deadlift attempt, uh, are you going to walk up to them having a sub 500 pound deadlift and be like, I don't know, bro. It just looks like you weren't strong enough, right? You're never going to do that, right? Now, if somebody does do that, well, both people are probably getting kicked out of the gym because they got into a fight, right? Um, but yeah, seriously, on a real note, nobody will ever do that, right? So there's a time and place for criticism and critique, right? You've all dealt with that one person who's just like, oh, well, if you did this, you would do it. And, it would be a day. and they're nowhere near as strong as you. They don't know what they're talking about, but they're just offering advice because they feel like it's just needed. When 99% of the time, it's not needed at all. Like it's literally, you would not need to hear a word that came out of this person's mouth. But there's a very good time and place for if somebody walks up to you after bench session and they say, hey, man, I noticed that you had a lot of wobble in the bar, you know, a lot of like elbow flare or something, something stupid. Like I noticed that your wrists are really wobbling. You don't wear wrist wraps and then something like that. Well, that's a really good time to give advice. Now, how do you accept and how do you know when advice is good? How do you know when to take advice? Right. Because everybody at the gym nowadays thinks that they know everything. You know, and the, the number one thing that I can tell new people when they're getting into the gym is screw what people tell you, bro. Just lift. You know what I'm saying? Don't think about it so much. Just lift because you're never going to get far if you don't lift in the first place. If you're so caught up on what people are telling you, then it doesn't matter, right? So that's the first thing that I'm going to get out the way. It really doesn't matter what people tell you. If what you're doing is working, do what you're doing, right? If you're not out looking for advice, if you are not actively asking people, you know, not even asking people, but you're listening, you're constantly listening to what people are talking about. And you're like, you're trying to find advice off of that. You're trying to grow because you, you find this, this just a wrong time and place for you, right? Like it, you're plateauing, it's going down the drain, right? It's just a bad time. In that case right there, accept all the information that you possibly can. Don't use all of it. Definitely don't use all of it. But you take in every single piece of information that you could possibly take in. If your lifts are going down, if you're plateauing, if whatever, take all the advice that you can get and listen to it. Hear it out. You know, you don't have to try everything. Try, try probably most of it. Most of it should help. But take it all in the first place, right? If you're in that position where you're like, man, I need some advice. You're looking for it. You're open and looking for it. Take the advice. Take it understand it, learn it. If it's completely wrong and you heard it for the 10th time, then don't, you know what I'm saying? But at least listen, accept the advice because maybe they said something that's a little bit different, right? You don't need to apply it. You got to learn like when to apply it, right? You got you to build your own knowledge, but don't always apply it. Now, what do I mean by when I say don't listen to anything anybody tells you? Now, this best works for my really, really new lifters, right? People who just walk in the gym. If you just walk in the gym Medium lifters are licking their chops for you, right? They just want to tell you how to lift, how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, this, that, that, that. And they don't actually think like, oh, well, maybe more people than just me are helping them. No, no, I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be that guy that makes that dude strong, right? I'm going to find a dude. He's got a coach. Screw the coach. I'm going to go help him, right? When you're new into lifting, if you have any idea what you're doing and it feels good and you are getting stronger, Block out everything everyone says, right? Ex like, accept advice. Listen to what people will say. Don't change a thing. Literally, don't change a thing. If you notice that something you're doing is making you stronger and someone says not to do it, say, okay, thanks for the advice and go back to doing it. And if they say, why are you still doing it? Well, because it works for me. Why would I change it if it works, right? So if something works for you, never change it. Don't change it. Like, it doesn't matter. Eric Lowe, this is my biggest, this is my biggest piece of advice really it is just don't listen to everything people people say but my my like the model that i use off of this is eric lowbridge right anybody in their right mind would think doing three squats into a deadlift before pulling the deadlift would make you weaker 
Is that not... So Eric Lobich, he'd do three jerks into the bar. He, he, he would put his hips into the bar three times before on the fourth time doing that, he actually picked the bar up off of the floor. Think about that. You must be... You're doing three air squats and then trying to deadlift. How does, how does that work? Like, right? You, you think about that. You're like, dude, you must be getting sore. You must be getting tired doing that. But nobody ever told him that. I mean, people probably did along the way. But in the end, nobody ever said anything about it because he pulled 900 damn pounds. It doesn't matter how you get there. It just matters that you're there. You see what I'm saying? That was That's one of the perfect times where if it's working for you, it kept working for him. His three, I could never do that, right? I used to do it when I, when I still pulled him natural. But sumo, there's, no, there's just no way I could do it, right? Three jerks and me just feel super weird on the bar. It doesn't matter. But he pulled 900 pounds, so nobody's going to say anything to him, right? So if you are a newer lifter and what you are doing is working, do not change things. Don't listen to people. You, you see what I'm saying? If there's, if there's certain parts where you want to listen to people, listen to people on that. But if what are you doing is working, do not change it. it that's, what I've, that's just a message that I've repeatedly said on this channel. It is if it's working, don't change it. And especially when it comes to taking advice, advice is great. You know, if you're, if you're running out of, you're running out of answers pretty much for crazy questions being thrown at you, advice is great, right? If you're, if you're doing a test and, and you're like, man, I just cannot get these answers. Well, you're going to ask for help, right? But if you're doing a test and you're answering the problem the wrong way, but you're getting the right answer every single time, why would you listen to, why would you, why would you have to learn a whole new equation to still get the same answer? If the test was graded on just getting the correct answer, why would you need to do the, the whole equation that people think is correct when you could just do your own equation and still get the right answer? There's no reason, right? There's no reason to, to take that time to go that route. So a big part when that played into play with me was, if you don't know, I did not actually leave my basement gym. I never lived at, at another gym other than like freshman year, kind of freshman, sophomore year. Halfway through sophomore year, <laughs> I would train at like the school gym, right? That was it. But I was still benching. I was benching probably 365, 335, one of the two, before I actually got myself a fir my first gym membership. Is that not crazy to think about? I was literally benching 365. I knew nothing from nobody until one day one person said, hey, you know, you're really strong. Maybe you could take it to the next level if you come to check out this gym. And that was a good piece of advice for me, right? That That's when you have to learn because... I wasn't, you know, I was doing good, but I wasn't like super motivated at the time or anything. I was just keep getting stronger. And he's like, hey, this is a good, good group of guys. I would recommend you come hang out, train with us. You know what I'm saying? And that ended up being the gym that I stuck with, right? That was great advice to take. That was one of those times where it was like, hey, you know, it's not about something that I'm doing that's working. You know, I'm not like, I'm not, I don't currently have a crazy group of guys that I'm around, but that advice was great. And I'm super glad and grateful that I took that advice. But if I already had a gym and people were trying to get me to go to other gyms, well, there would just be no point in me going to other gyms. You see what I'm saying? Because if you're currently motivated, if what you're doing is working, there's no reason to change it. And so back to what I'm talking about, about me lifting my basement, for the longest time I bench with a flat back, I would be benching like this. This is how my bench was, right? And everybody, you, you know, would tell me like, oh, you gotta learn the leg drop. My, le my foot used to tap on the floor, right? Obviously it was wrong. But everybody used to tell me, fix that, you know what I'm saying? Fix that leg drive, blah, 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 blah. I never did it. I never changed or fixed a leg drive. Eventually, I figured out how to change and fix that leg drive myself. I never listened to other people because at that time, I was just more focused on growing the bench, right? It didn't matter if my legs were tapping or if my legs were driving at that time because my bench was getting stronger. So I didn't need to listen at that point. But once, once I started running out of it, I got answers, you know what I'm saying? I still listened to everything everybody told me. And, and as the bench press got harder, I did my research. And I was like, oh, so this is how you do leg drive. And from there, boom, three, 315 to 405 literally happened in like six months, bro, I swear. But I found that out on my own. You see what I'm, ha you see what I'm saying? I found that out on my own. People had told me about it. I've always listened and accepted their advice. But I really took it to the next level and found that part out on my own. So... Listen to everything everyone tells you. You never know when you're going to need it down the road or when something someone said will make sense down the road. But at this point, if it is working good, there's no reason to change it. If you're plateaued, listen to what people are telling you. Listen, like seriously, if you're not making any gains, yes, listen to other people. Other people should know more than you 
about certain things, right? If we all had one great brain, bro, people would be squatting 2,000 pounds, right? <laughs> Seriously, think about if every 1,000 pound squatter ever sat in a room together and just poured their ideas out and they created one person, it would probably be a 1,500 pound squatter, literally, just because of how much knowledge that would be. So listen to everything people tell you, but only take when it's time to take. Take when you need the answer. Take when what you're doing isn't working anymore. Don't just take to take. So hopefully what I just said makes sense because this has really been like my number one piece of just like advice that I can hand out to any newer lifter, right? They're like, oh man, I gotta learn this, I gotta learn that. My bench is like flat back. Like, dude, if you're getting stronger, who cares? Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Maybe you could get stronger a little bit faster if you listen to certain things. But if it's too much to fish out and you can't listen to everybody, don't listen to anybody at all. Only take it when you need the answers, right? Only take it once you max, once you limit yourself, once you ran out of answers in the first place. So hopefully this made sense, guys. We're gonna do a double post today. I'm gonna have another video going up in about six hours. So go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Go ahead, follow me on Instagram too, Blake went one. It'll be in my uh, link below. If you got video ideas, like I said, comment down below. I'm going to answer them. I'll make a video about them. Promise. So uh, yeah, this Blake went signing out. Peace.